Hi, my name is Brandy Horn. I'm an instruction and reference librarian at the Greg Graniteville Library. Um, uh, to help you with your research in Dr. Hampton's class, I have come up with a worksheet that you can use to guide you. And I'm doing this kind of um, very rough video to uh, give you some additional guidance so that you have some visuals for what I'm talking about. And plus, I really kind of wanted to explain what I was doing here on this worksheet so that you understand what's going on. So this is what we're doing. Um, if you've taken critical inquiry, which I'm sure most of you have, um, remember we introduced you to the steps of the basic research process. Um, this worksheet is walking you through the steps of the basic research process, but it's taking a slightly different approach because I'm tailoring this to literary criticism research. Um, and when you're dealing with literary criticism, there you can combine a couple of steps and save some time, and that's what we're looking at with this. So the first step of the research process is to identify your topic. So whatever work you're writing about, you would write that down under number one, and if there's a specific aspect or element or theme or something that you're interested in with that work, you would you could identify that in that space as well. Now the second step is the part that I really wanted to explain to you. What I have here is a table and I have filled it out with um, suggestions for you for ways to think about um, uh, different ways to search for information that would help you with your um, with your paper. Okay, um, so what this table does, and ideally it's a blank table, you could draw it on a piece of paper if you wanted to, um, uh, it allows you to explore different potential combinations of search terms uh, that you might use to find information on your topic. Okay, now when you're dealing with literary criticism, um, uh, usually just starting with the author's name is a good way to start so start broadly as possible you start with your author's name and then search and see what happens um, you may not get very much right depending on who your author is um, if they're more contemporary or if they're obscure or if they're a global author there may not be a whole lot and so if you search your author's name and just get a few dozen <clears throat> articles I would just go through all those articles and see what you have but if you search an author and get hundreds or thousands of articles, then you'll probably want to limit your search further. So that first line where I just have author, that's your first search. Each line represents one search, okay? Um, the second line, I have author in the first box, and then I've written title in the second box. So if you've dealt with library databases like Academic Search Premier, you know that there are multiple search boxes. Um, that is to allow you to combine different concepts so that you can tell the database that you're looking for articles that contain both concepts or, you know, three concepts or whatever you're looking at. Um, so in this case, you would put author in the first search box and the title of the work that you're looking at in the second search box. You want to keep one concept per box. Don't try to fit a whole bunch of stuff into one search box or write out whole sentences or anything. One concept per box. So with that second search, you're telling the database that you're looking for articles that mention that author and that specific title. And that's to see if there are any articles writing about the work that you're looking at. And if there are, you go through those and see what you've got. Um, again, you may have, you may find that you get a lot of results. You may still get hundreds of results. If that's the case, then in the third box, so for your third search, you can do author in the first box, title in the second box, and then whatever specific aspect of the work that you're looking at, whatever element you're looking at, you could type that into the third box. Okay. These could be things like themes, time periods, characters, stuff like that. Um, so whatever specific element uh, you're looking at, you could type that in. Now, when you're looking at things like elements, it's important to keep in mind that there are multiple ways to discuss the same kinds of concepts. Like if the thing that you're looking at is death, you might use the word death or dying or grief. Um, or various things like that. So there are usually multiple ways to get at the concepts that you're interested in. Okay, um, so it's helpful to think of in terms of synonyms, right, other ways to express ideas and or related terms, other things that get you there. Like if you're talking about death and dying, are you talking about um, 
disease? Are you talking about being buried alive? Or, you know, this is a very, these are very grim examples. I apologize. Um, but, you know, there are different ways to get at those ideas. Okay. Um, so you do that search author title the specific element you're interested in and see if there are any articles that talk about that now you may find that there are not many articles or there aren't any at all that talk about the specific work that you're looking at again it depends on how obscure it is if that's the case then you would want to search for ti or excuse me author in the first search box and then the particular element that you're looking at because what you will find is that authors tend to write about the same things over and over and over again and so my death ideas come from Edgar Allan Poe that's a common theme in his work so if you were looking at something written by him but you're not finding any articles about it you might find other articles that talk about him talking about those themes and other works those potentially could still be useful to you um, if they support arguments that you're making based on the source text, based on the short story or whatever you're looking at, okay? So you could say something like, um, Poe is doing this thing here, okay? Um, other researchers or other scholars have noticed that Poe has done this elsewhere. So-and-so points out that Poe, blah, 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 pull your quote or your paraphrase from a particular work, and then you bring it back and say, I see that Poe is doing the same thing in this work and then you support your assertions with the source text, if that makes sense. So you don't necessarily have to find articles that talk about your specific work, but as long as you can find things that talk about the author and the elements that you're looking at, those could still potentially be useful. Now depending on what aspect of the work you're looking at, you might also look at things like time period or events, like thing that's happening at the time. I noticed your professor's example has the things they carried by Tim O'Brien, so focusing on that time, um, uh, the specific uh, war, those kinds of things could also be useful. So author combined with time period world event, um, you could also look at, depending on what you're looking at, author and location or region. Uh, Flannery O'Connor um, is from the southeast. So, you know, Flannery O'Connor and Georgia or southeast United States or southern U.S. or things like that could potentially be useful. Um, also, time period and element. Like if you're looking at wartime in that time period or if you're looking at um, death during Victorian era or something like that. Um, you know, again, these are other ways that you could find information because ultimately what you're trying to do is get a better handle on what you've read and to be able to explore it and discuss it. So any information uh, that helps you to understand the text could potentially be useful to you. It doesn't necessarily have to be tied to the work. It doesn't necessarily have to be tied to the author. Okay, but anything that helps you understand it could be a uh, uh, cultural thing that you're exploring, maybe religious practices in a particular region, right? Or maybe um, uh, cultural things from a time period in a particular region. All of these things could potentially be helpful to you. So that's what we've got in this table are different combinations of potential search terms um, or kind of categories of search terms uh, for you to consider when you are thinking about your work and how you might research this. Now remember I said that this uh, worksheet is based on the research process. We've identified our work or our topic, which is the first step. The second step is usually to brainstorm or explore our topic, and here we are doing that by thinking about what it is we're interested in, and then what language would we use to articulate those concepts, and then how would we combine those different concepts or that language um, as potential search terms to help us find information on our topic, right? So we've combined the, the brainstorming exploration phase with the keyword generation portion um, into one step, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, um, once you've done this, right, and you start with author, you go author title, right, and you follow this order, then you have a logical progression of searches that you can go through um, so that you can be sure to explore different um, aspects of your of your topic and get all the information that you need.
right? If one search doesn't work, you move on to the next one. If a particular word doesn't work, what's another way to express that idea? Try searching that instead, okay? And you can write these down on your worksheet so that you can keep track of what you've already searched and what you still need to search, okay? So that's the purpose of that table. It can be very useful to you. Now, if we go to the second page, I've got place for you to write book information for when you search the catalog. You don't necessarily want to focus on print items right now, uh, but ebooks are available, and I can show you that very quickly in the next portion of this. Of um, uh, I'm going to do a separate video on searching, but this is just to cover the worksheet. Um, and that gives you place to write the book information so that you can kind of keep track of what you found that was useful to you. And then here for this third section, I have um, searching databases and I tell you how to get there. And then I give you three databases to get you started. But in the guide that I lead you to, you're welcome to use any of the databases that are there. And I will show you very quickly how to um, search those databases. But I give you the bullet points here so that if maybe listening to me is not particularly useful or whatever, you have the, the kinds of things I'm going to talk about bulleted in this worksheet, right? So I'm going to send out this worksheet to your professors so that she can email it out to everybody along with links to these videos, God willing that they work. So um, that's an explanation of the worksheet and what we're doing with the worksheet. And hopefully this makes sense to you. Um, but yes, and now I will move on to the next video, which is searching. So stick with me um, and we'll be okay.